so it's Christmas Eve Eve and I kind of feel like doing like a 24 hour readathon kind of thing. So I just watched Reagan uh, at Peru's project do one. She had an impending root canal and so she timed it for like the 24 hours before she had to go to her root canal. Um, so mine actually won't be 24 hours, more like just, I guess, read as much as I can between now and like the 26th or something. Um, so Sunday. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna read tonight. Tomorrow we have brunch at my aunt and uncle's house and then don't really have anything going on the rest of Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, I think is actually just gonna be hanging out around the house. We're actually doing like our main family Christmas on the 26th. So my sister's family can have like just their time to be them um, on Christmas Day. So I should have a lot of time to read this weekend. So I am currently reading about a quarter of the way through Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. <coughs> the last present I have to wrap is for my brother-in-law. It's Leviathan Wakes, the first in the Expanse series. And I basically want to test it out. I think that he'll really like it. And I think I might too. Also, actually, Reagan from Peru's Project um, it has started this series recently and has really been into it. So that's kind of what had it on my, how it got on my radar. And so I'm just very carefully reading this copy. I'm pretty nice to my books anyway. Um, but I want to read the first couple chapters and see if I might be into it before I wrap it for Lewis. And then uh, I found out Joan Didion died today and I had just picked this old library copy up from a Little Free Library recently and it's been sitting kind of on my TBR shelf. This was originally from the Chicago Pub Public Library. Um, this is the year of magical thinking. So maybe I'll pick up that up as well. I just feel like just reading like random things, like, like not having a rhyme or a reason for what I want to read. I just want to read what I want to read. I have so many unread books and I would like to, I would just, I just want to read them all. I want to read all the new books. I want to read all the old books. I just want to read the books. And I spend so much time not reading that it frustrates me. So I just want to, give myself the gift of reading over this holiday weekend. So I read a little bit more in Leviathan Wakes and I think I'm into it. I just don't want to continue reading a big ass book that I don't own yet. So I'm sold. Uh, so I'll get that wrapped. Um, I've been reading, reading Joan, Didion, Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking, which she won the National Book Award for. Yeah, this is a memoir of hers, which I actually didn't realize at first. And whew, rough, rough times. So her daughter was already in the ICU from basically complications of the flu. And she had pneumonia and she was septic. And she and her husband had just caught home from the hospital. And he just basically like dies of a massive coronary. And so that's like the premise that's like the start of of the book and so i'm 20, 25 pages in and she uh kind of just gotten home from the hospital after he's died and ah uh, very good it's very good so far um i think it's going to be probably a hard read for me having uh well, lost my husband uh, not quite two years ago um but uh, it's kind of the thing I've been leaning into lately, so uh, I'm into it. I really like her writing so far as well. Um, the reason I can never really do like a legit 24 hour readathon is because I'm tired. It's 8.58 and my eyelids feel so heavy. Um, I'm gonna finish watching, I was watching Je Jess, Jess Owens Best Books of 2021 earlier, um, and I had to stop in the middle of it. So I'm going to watch the rest of that, see if maybe I can catch my second wind um, and do a little bit more reading. Otherwise, I'll probably fall asleep on the couch before I head to bed and pick up in the morning.
oh my goodness, I just recorded an entire clip that I wasn't actually recording. So take two. So it is 6.59. I'm going to read for about 45 minutes or so, then get ready to go to the gym, get my workout done before I start day drinking at Christmas Eve brunch. But first I wanted to show you this amazing collection of my great grandma Ruby's recipes that my cousin Lisa had um, like printed up. So this picture was from her 93rd birthday and that's her with her country western guitar. And um, I call it a guitar in relationship to her because she was from Arkansas and Oklahoma and she called it a guitar. So I have this guitar and it has this amazing, um, I don't know, kind of western looking print and everything on the pick guard. Um, but anyway, I think this picture just like so captures her when she was just really having fun and, and full of life. But it has, it has, it's full of pictures, but then also of just like the photographed or scanned in copies of her, um, with her actual handwriting, which is so cool. And then there's every now and then there's a little note or a little doodle that says Mr. Smiley. So it's so neat just to see it with her handwriting. This was her Watergate cake. Um, you know, you can even see like the different colored paper that it was printed on. There'll be little notes about, um, like she writes out this whole recipe and at the bottom it just says, sounds good to me. Ruby Moore, 12, 23, 09. Um, or she'll write a note about where she got it or um, when she plans to make it. Um, like there's one that says she like rewrote it you know, she originally got the recipe at one time and then she rewrote it at another time. And so I just thought it was funny that she would like, that she cared to um, make those notes. I thought that was really interesting. And then the little Bridget Jones diary moment, she writes out this uh, quick and easy Creole dinner. And then at the very end, it just says, very good, my recipe. So um, anyway, I just, this, this is really cool. My mom showed this to me last night. Um, I guess my my cousin mailed it to us. So that's cool. So I'm going to read, oh, there's a little bedhead action for you. A little rooster in the morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to read Under the Spring Door. I'm going to track how much I'm reading. So I fell asleep quite early as I kind of expected last night. So I read about 30 pages, 35 to 40 pages between Leviathan Wakes and the Joan Didion, Joan Didion, The Year of Magical Thinking. Um, and so now I'm gonna get back to Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune and read for, yeah, about 45 minutes or so. And we'll see how long my attention span can actually, can it hold for 45 minutes? We shall see. The gym is full today. Way more than a normal 8.15 on a Friday morning. Good work, people. What do we want? What do we want? I don't know. Did you want more water or juice? What is that? It's a minion. Is it a minion? You guys can go ahead. Go Oh, you ripping the baby? Yeah. <laughs> you did, you got 
got a dinosaur purse, didn't you? Oh, Look at Grandma Ruby is so happy that you have that. So it is now 10 after 2. Basically just came home from my aunt and uncle's to one change out of my flannel pajama pants into just a pair of joggers. But I think the distinction is important. And for me, that is. Um, and I needed to check my recipe for the pork uh, loin I'm making on Sunday. I know I got the pork loin this morning when I went to get the fruit, but I didn't have time to look at the recipe before I went to the store. Also, I went to one store. I have to go to the other store right now because that's where my pharmacy is and I have some stuff to pick up. So anyway, basically I need a couple Granny Smith apples, a couple Honeycrisp or Pink Lady apples, and I need some herbs. So there's, there's like a raw relish kind of thing that goes, uh, that goes on top of the pork, but then it's cooked with onions and the Granny Smith apples. I can't, I can't remember which ones, the sweet apples or the tart apples go, are the raw ones and which ones are the ones that get cooked. But anyway, it's so, so good. So my mom and I just decided the starch, we're going to do easy, and I think it's going to go go best with the pork anyway. We're just going to do rice, so that'll be really easy to do right before we eat in the rice cooker. And then we don't have to worry about doing mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes or anything like that. And then um, we'll have salad, and my sister's doing a couple of veggies. So um, that should do it for that. So otherwise, after I run this errand, I think I'm just going to be at home hanging out. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll end up doing, watching something. Um, I don't know if maybe my parents want to watch something together. My, my dad's got, a, my dad's the choir director at his church. And so he's going to have to go do, I think two masses tonight because midnight mass. But I think there's a, like a five o'clock mass as well. So anyway, basically the plan is for me. To just hang out so pretty much like the official festivities for the day are done with and I just gotta run this errand and then go home and hang out so yeah that's it um, really glad I got my workout done this morning I've um, every month just like I do for my own clients every month my coach sends me I get new workouts so it's five different workouts that I do for you know four times four weeks in a row and then get a new set of ex exercises so I knew that this workout was coming up. It was my day five workout and I've been dreading it ever since I first saw it because it include, included both reverse lunges, which just lunges just suck in general, but and step ups and ugh, I hate step ups so much. And so I'd really been dreading it, but you know, I did it. I got through it. Um, also, everything I'm doing right now is really high reps, and so just like if it's over 12 reps, it feels like cardio to me, and so everything right now I'm doing is 12 to 15 reps, so it just feels like a lot, especially when it's something that's one side at a time, because that means 15 reps is actually 30 reps. So anyway, um, I'm just like proud of myself that I had a good attitude about it, powered through, finished the workout, and got that done before brunch this morning, which by the way was half an hour earlier than I thought it was. For some reason, I thought we were meeting at 11, but it was 1030. So that kind of rushed me. Um, but anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. So I'll catch up with you later when I'm actually reading. My attention span is crap. Now I didn't take a nap. I read like a half an hour and then I took a nap. But I'm on page 177. I've only read like 36 pages and it is 545 because I just keep getting distracted and going on my phone or just doing other things, getting up to get a drink 17 times. Now I have popcorn and beer, Christmas Eve dinner. So yeah, how long can you just sit and read in one go? All right, I'm gonna try to go for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, let's go. I made it my 30 minutes. I turned on a read with me. I have a read with me with Jen Campbell right now. 
Lovely, she's sitting by the window while it's snowing outside. With Lola and her lap and surrounded by houseplants. So I have my Stevie here. There he is. Next to me. Okay. Whoops. Occasionally he's on my on my lap or warming up my feet. But whoa. I'm really enjoying under their whispering door. It so Wallace, our main character, has died. We know we know that he, he dies very he dies right at the very beginning. And he is taken to this place that's like this waiting room kind of place. It's actually like a house with this like tea shop. And the ferryman is there as well as the reaper that brought him, brought his ghost from his funeral to this place. And it's basically there to like figure out that there's more to life than living or something like that. Um, so there seems to be kind of a philosophical thing happening here where, I just said happening, funny. So anyway, so as I expected, this character is becoming better, basically, through his experience with these other people um, in this tea house situation here. And he's, he's come to realize how terrible he was, how cruel and selfish he was, and um, he's now even doing things for other people. He's established relationships and he's caring about these people, um, which is lovely. So um, I have, I don't know, I have some maybe clues, so like ideas of where this is maybe going. Oh, I don't want a Jen video. I want to read with me. A read with me Jen video. Okay, I'm just gonna switch to Chill Hop. Lo-fi. Yeah, get some funky beats. Anyway, it's lovely. There is this, I don't know if it's meant to be there or if I'm just feeling this, but there is this feeling of kind of claustrophobia because he's essentially not really trapped, kind of trapped. He can't really leave this house um, until he's ready to go through the door, like to the afterlife. Um, and, and so he's basically waiting. People who come there are or ghosts who come there are basically waiting to be ready to enter into the afterlife from what I'm from what I'm getting from it but yeah it's really really quite charming I think is is the right word for it so um yeah I'm really I'm really enjoying it so I think the 30 minutes was a good good amount of time for me so I think I'm going to do that again Alexa Set a timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, starting now. I'm over halfway through now. Christmas. It's a little after six on the Christmas morning. I've got Christmas jazz, crackling fire ambiance going. And uh, I'm about to start my morning flow. So even on Christmas day, even on the weekends, I do this morning flow. Just kind of setting up the day. And uh, I start with gratitude. Someone or something I'm, gratitude, I'm grateful for. I call it my BART list, which is basically affirmations. So what I write is I enjoy being a productive leader 25 times. And then I write a handwritten note with a card or just I'll just tear out a piece of my bullet journal even and write someone a note. It makes a big difference um, to them. And it's great just kind of getting my thoughts and feelings about someone and how much I appreciate them on paper. Um, I recently, the who I wrote the notes, who I had a card with me, was uh, I was at Pete's Coffee, my local pizza's like way better than Starbucks. Um, but there's one right down the street from me and I often spend mornings there, early mornings doing my morning business meeting there and uh, including my morning flow. And uh, so I 
left a card with them when as I as I left and the next time I came in um, the manager was like she's like oh my gosh thank you so much for your card it was the worst day and your that your words totally got me through the day so the power the power of words and a handwritten note so anyway I'm gonna crack on with that before I get back to Under the Whispering Door. I ended up reading, um, I think about 130 pages or so in this yesterday, and the Joan Didion book is too far for me to reach right now, but I think I probably read like 50 pages or so in that as well. So not like an epic reading day, but like way more reading than I've gotten done in one day in a really long time. So really happy with that. I found, I eventually like got my groove and stopped being so distracted. So setting the 30 minute timers really helped in that I would, the timer would go off and then I would like finish the chapter and then I would do something to kind of like, whatever, mind, physical break, and then um, get back to it with another 30 minute timer and then the same thing. And then I just stopped setting timers and was just reading like solidly through. So great, great day in general yesterday. Today is basically not Christmas around here so my sister and husband and her kids are having christmas day on their own um not having to run around from family to family just getting to enjoy each other and so our actual christmas day like the whole family deal is gonna be tomorrow <clears throat> so that means that today is basically gonna be like cleaning day and like cleaning and lounging and hanging out day essentially so uh, that's what's up on the docket. So, um, you know, hopefully, yeah, I should, I should finish under the whispering door today and I can let you know my thoughts on that. so far and I'm already at like 20 minutes or something and so this is I'm not gonna be able to make it like two more days and have you actually still watching so kudos if you're still watching but I just had kind of some finishing thoughts by the way if this looks different it's because I am just am using a new um, like webcam like streaming webcam that I got more for my business than anything and it's the first time I'm using it so the quality as far as the picture quality is way better than like if I just used like the webcam on my computer which is excellent but I haven't figured out how to change any of the like visual settings so it looks like oddly dark and um, like a, a ring light would definitely help but I don't know if there's like something I can change in the settings as far as that goes it also seems to be like a very cool look it's also weird because the view of me is down here but I have to look up here at you and there's quite a height difference between the two so that's weird but anyway um I, had, I wrote a facebook post this morning kind of based on you know it's christmas day and so i had lots of facebook memories um many of which were of my late husband and i in his hospital bed together um on christmas morning i would make sure that the staff knew to leave him in bed until well after i got there and i would pile him with presents and we would lay there in bed together and open presents and I would buy presents to me from him and uh, we would go back and forth opening gifts and we would have a Christmas uh, the, uh, a Christmas story on TNT just on a loop and um, so obviously that's not happening this year it didn't that last year was the first year that that wasn't happening and I also have um, a few people quite close to me who are experiencing their first Christmas without someone so while for most of us you know Christmas is a happy time, maybe a stressful time, but we have our family, we have our loved ones. Um, and I know for some people, it's a really, really difficult time. And just, I just seem to just keep being attracted to books about death. And I'm like, sometimes I've done it on purpose and sometimes not so much. Like Under the Whispering Door, even though I knew that's what it's about, it's about a guy who dies. And, um, but I, I wasn't necessarily like choosing it because of that. It's just because I love the house in the Cerulean Sea and I wanted to read TJ Klune's next book. And then the Joan, the Joan Didion book, I actually didn't realize it was just the only Joan Didion book I had. And I just found out that she died. And so I thought, yeah, I should pick that up. So it's just like 
death is freaking everywhere. And that's kind of the point of Under the Whispering Door, is that it's inevitable. It's everywhere. It's not fair to whom it happens, when it happens, how it happens, all of that. But it's part of life. And kind of my point in this Facebook post I made was that for those of us who have loved and lost, as hard as, as, hard as it is, especially around the holidays, around birthdays, around kind of anniversary-like dates, and especially as hard as the first of each of those is, we are who we are today because we love that person, because that person loved us. And because of whatever we have endured in the losing of that person. And we will be who we will be in the future because of that relationship, because of their impact on us, and because of now the resilience and strength that we've had to show to keep going. So um, if you have loved and lost, and this is a hard holiday season for you. Uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. It, The second year around, I can tell you, is better than the first year was. Um, so, yeah, just love and uh, love and good reads to you. See you around the tubes.